Good morning students. Today we will be starting with a new session, session number 15. We will be discussing about a relationship between your equilibrium constant with your E0 cell through Nernst equation. You can calculate the equilibrium constant Kc for a cell reaction. In order to derive this uh, uh, relationship for equilibrium constant from Nernst equation, I will be taking an example of Daniel cell. Daniel cell. Daniel cell. What is the cell reaction? We know zinc undergoes oxidation while copper undergoes reduction so this is your cell reaction zinc undergoes oxidation copper undergoes reduction now we have seen that zinc and copper both are two different half cells that is zinc is your oxidation half cell copper is your reduction half cell which is present in two different containers as the electricity passes on that is as the uh, reduction and oxidation takes place in your both the half cells the electricity is produced and it will be passing from your uh, anode to cathode so current will be flowing from cathode to anode as a result we have seen that the zinc ion concentration due to oxidation zinc ion concentration goes on increasing while copper ion concentration goes on decreasing that is as time passes time passes the concentration of the concentration of zn2 plus ions increases that is because your metallic zinc loses electrons and they enter your aqueous solution as zinc ions as a result zinc ion concentration increases on your anodic side anodic half cell while uh, the concentration of copper 2 plus ion decreases this is because uh, the electrons coming from anode is accepted by these copper ions present in your aqueous medium and they get deposited over your copper rod so as a result concentration of copper copper ions in your aqueous solution decreases this goes on fluctuating the electric current produced which is shown by your voltmeter voltmeter shows different values at different instances of time from your daniel cell that is because due to the variation of this concentration of zinc ion and copper ions at a particular time the voltmeter starts to show a reading of zero that is this is equal to zero volts so the voltmeter starts to show a, a reading of zero volt which means that there is no electric current passing through the cell daniel cell also which means that this reaction the cell reaction has attained an equilibrium state so the reaction goes on goes on goes on as the time moves zinc ion concentration increases copper ion concentration decreases at a particular instance of time you can see that voltmeter shows a zero voltage which means that the reaction above which we have taken it has attained your equilibrium state that is it has attained an equilibrium state like this this is when this is when your voltmeter shows you zero volts at this condition that is when the voltmeter shows you zero volts the reaction is at equilibrium and at this instance at this instance at this instance the concentration of zn2 plus and concentration of cu2 plus remains remains unchanged unchanged remains unchanged that is it remains constant that is the zinc ion concentration which was increasing the copper ion concentration was decreasing this remains unchanged at this constant uh, that at this stage where the voltmeter starts to show you zero volts that is at equilibrium the concentration of zinc ion and copper ions remains unchanged so at this stage when the uh, concentration of zinc ion and copper ion remains unchanged it, me it means that the concentration of zinc and copper ions is constant which is equal to your equilibrium constant that is concentration of zn2 plus divided by concentration of cu2 plus is a constant which is nothing but your 
equilibrium constant. It is nothing but your equilibrium constant. That is by applying your law, law of mass action for this equation at equilibrium, you get this relationship that is Kc is equal to Zn2 plus by Cu2 plus. That is product divided by reactant. You can also write your copper here. You can also write your copper divided by your zinc. I have not written because the molar concentration of pure substance, solid, liquid or your gas, it is equal to 1. As a result, I have just taken this. That is concentration of Zn2 plus, concentration of copper 2 plus remains unchanged, which means it is a constant. It is equal to Kc. If this was, if this was your Q, say for example, this is your Q means, what is Q? Q is your reaction quotient. So, it is an instance of your uh, equilibrium react uh, this reaction the uh, electrochemical reaction that we have taken here which is not at equilibrium but we have considered equilibrium as a result i have taken it is equal to k since it is at equilibrium the q the reaction quotient will become it is equal to your kc that is nothing but your equilibrium constant now looking into your uh, nurst equation what is nurst equation e cell is equal to e not cell minus 2.303 RT divided by NF log of concentration of here it since it is your Daniel cell it is equal to concentration of Zn2 plus divided by concentration of Cu2 plus that is product divided by reactant or oxidized form divided by your reduced form. At this instance that is when the uh, voltmeter shows you 0 volts which means that there is no electric current passing through the cell, which means that E cell is equal to 0, which means that E cell is equal to 0. As I have already told you, when your voltmeter shows you 0, the reaction is at equilibrium, which means that there is no electricity passing through the cell. Hence, E cell is equal to 0. So, this parameter becomes equal to 0. That is, E cell is equal to 0, which is equal to E naught cell minus 2.303 RT divided by N we know. What is the N for Daniel cell? N is equal to 2. What is N? It is the number of electron transfer. So, it is equal to 2. So, 2 F log of the concentration of Zn2 plus by copper 2 plus. I have taken already it is equal to Kc. As a result, this becomes Kc. Now, after substituting all these R, T and Faraday value, that is R is your gas constant, 8.314 joules per Kelvin per mole. Temperature, if it is taken to be 25 degrees Celsius, that is 298 Kelvin. Faraday is 96,500 coulombs. The equation becomes, if I equate this, E cell is 0. So, I am equating this for e equation E naught cell, that is equal to E naught cell is equal to 0 0.0591 divided by n which is equal to 2 then log kc in general i can write it also as e naught cell is equal to 0.0591 by n n here it is 2 because it is a for daniel cell this is for general equation log kc So, this is for your Daniel cell, for Daniel cell, Daniel cell and remember at temperature is equal to 298 Kelvin, at temperature is equal to 298 Kelvin, the equation becomes 0 0.0591, n is equal to 2 here, log Kc. In general, if I take it out, it becomes E naught cell. What is E naught cell? It is the standard electrode potential, standard reduction potential, cell potential is equal to 0 0.0591 by n, n is number of electron transfer log Kc. So, based upon this equation, you can calculate your equilibrium constant Kc for any cell at equilibrium. So, using this, we have to calculate the equilibrium constant of some of the cell reactions. So, that is, we have to do some numericals, very important equation. So, E naught cell is equal to 0 0.0591 by n log Kc at very remember temperature is equal to 298 Kelvin. If temperature is varied, you have to use this formula. 
that is minus 2.303 RT because temperature varies T divided by NF. So, you have to use this equation. The next thing we are discussing in this session is a relationship between Gibbs free energy, a thermochemical parameter that you have studied in your thermodynamics, Gibbs free energy of the electrochemical cell and cell potential that is your electrochemical parameter, electrochemistry parameter with your thermochemistry parameter. Today we, have, we are going to uh, have a relationship. So for this I am taking an example of an electrochemical cell, of an electrochemical cell. Electrochemical cell has a spontaneous type of redox reaction. We all know it has a spontaneous redox reaction. Redox reaction. The spontaneous word gives you the picture of delta G with this negative. Negative. That is, the spontaneous reactions are the reactions which happen by itself. It does not require any external aid. The spontane in spontaneous redox reaction, the free energy of this reaction that is spontaneous redox reaction goes on decreasing. So, whenever for a reaction, either redox reaction or any type of reaction, if the free energy decreases, it means the reaction will be spontaneous. So, delta G negative means the free energy of the reaction, free energy of the reaction decreases decreases. So, that is the concept you have already studied. Electrochemical cell have a spontaneous redox reaction which means delta G is negative. The next thing is the electrochemical cells convert your chemical energy into electrical energy. So, they convert your chemical energy into electrical energy. In terms of thermodynamics, I can tell this is the work done by your electrical, that is electrochemical cell. This is your work done, work done. This is your work done. In thermochemical parameters, if I have to tell what is electrochemical cell doing, it is doing chemical energy, converting chemical energy into electrical energy. So, that is the work done by your electrochemical cell. Hence, what type of work done is this? If I take it out, it is your electrical work done. Therefore, it is the electrical work done by the cell. So, this is your electrical work done by the cell. That is, it is producing electricity from your chemical energy. Now, if I take how much amount of electricity is produced from this cell? That is amount of electricity produced by the cell, by the cell, it is equal to, what is the amount of electricity produced by the cell? If it is equal to the amount of charge flown amount of charge flown into cell potential, into cell potential. So, it has done a type of work. What is the type of work? It is the electrical work done. That is, it has produced some electrical energy. What amount of electrical energy is produced? It is equal to amount of charge flown. What is the amount of charge flown into cell potential? That is nothing but it is equal to amount of charge flown, charge in the form of electrons. Electron flow is nothing but your charge flow. So, electrons, n number of electrons. If I take n number of electrons, I do not know, I have not taken a particular example. As a result, I have taken n number of electrons into F. What is F? F is the charge of 1 mole of electrons. So, it becomes n number of electrons into Faraday. It is the amount of charge of such many electrons into cell potential E cell into E cell. So, this is the amount of current flown through the cell when you have a electrochemical cell which is converting your electricity into that is chemical energy into electrical energy. So, this is the amount of 
electricity produced which is nothing but this is the amount of work done. What do you mean by free energy? Very simple free energy is nothing but it is the part of total energy of a system utilized to do some useful work. So your Gibbs free energy here which we have taken for your uh, uh, electrochemical cells is nothing but it is the part of energy it is the part of energy which is utilized to do some useful work. So this is the useful work done by the electrochemical cell by utilizing some portion of your total energy. As a result I can write it at as delta G delta G is negative as a result minus delta G is equal to N F E cell. What is delta G? It is the amount of energy utilized to do some useful work. What is the useful work done? The amount of that is the electricity produced. So this is the useful work done. This is the useful work done. That is nothing but your delta G. So as a result delta G is equal to N F E cell. If I multiply both the sides by negative charge it becomes delta G is equal to minus NF E cell. This is for your change in Gibbs free energy is equal to minus N. N is number of electron transfer. F is Faraday in coulombs. E is your cell potential. So at standard conditions, at standard conditions, delta G naught, that is standard change in Gibbs free energy, it is equal to minus NF E naught cell that is standard cell potential. Standard cell potential. This is a very important relationship based on which you have a numerical. So you have to solve numericals based on this also. That is if uh, E naught cell is known for a given cell, you can calculate the Gibbs free energy for that cell. So very important relationship you have numericals based on this also. You can also have a relationship between your Gibbs free energy and equilibrium constant. Here you have a relationship between Gibbs free energy and cell potential. Also you can have a relationship between Gibbs free energy and equilibrium constant. Let us see what is that. Say delta G naught is equal to NF E naught cell. NF E naught cell. We know that, we know that from your previous relationship that we have derived in your previous relationship, E naught cell is equal to 2.303 rt by nf log of kc this is from your previous equation which we have taken there i had not mentioned rt by f because i had already directly substituted it you can do so also here i have not substituted your r value t value and f value so it becomes 2.303 rt by nf log kc so say this is equation 1 say this is equation 2 upon substitution Upon substitution, the above equation becomes minus delta G naught is equal to NF into E naught cell is 2.303 RT by NF log of KC. NF, NF cancels. So it becomes minus delta G naught is equal to 2.303 rt log of kc if i multiply both sides by negative charge negative it becomes delta g naught is equal to minus 2.303 rt log kc so this is your another equation very important based upon which you have your numericals to be done so there are three relationship on which you have to do numericals let us list out all those three relationship that we have discussed in this session so the first relation was uh, uh, equilibrium constant relationship with your Nernst equation. It will be E naught cell is equal to 0 0.0591 by N log of Kc at temperature is equal to 298 Kelvin. The second relationship was between your E naught cell and Gibbs free energy that is delta G naught is equal to minus nf e naught cell the second equation the third equation was relationship between your delta g naught and your equilibrium constant that is delta g naught is equal to minus 2.303 rt log kc 
So these are your three important relationships based upon which you have to do some, solve some numericals.